What is up everybody? Welcome back to another sample library review. And today we are taking a look at a mammoth library called Hollywood Orchestra Opus Edition. And uh, first I wanna give a big thank you to East West for actually sending me a copy of this library to take a look at. I really do appreciate it. And this one was always one that I never really took the deep dive into because I was already kind of covered with my original libraries of orchestral tools and cine samples and cinematic studios. But when they approached me and mentioned that they had repackaged the Hollywood Orchestra into their new Opus engine and, uh, you know, offered it offered it to me to take a look at, I was more than happy to because I had actually specifically just purchased two new SSD drives for to make room for new libraries. And so I ended up having to dedicate one drive to this library, which comes in at just under one terabyte. So that's 1000 gigabytes. Um, that, that basically includes all everything, like the strings, woodwinds, brass, and percussion, plus there's solo, cello, and solo violin, and harp as well. So there's a lot in this library. Uh, we won't go over every single thing today, of course, because that would take a long, long time. And there are some really beautiful walkthroughs and review videos already on YouTube that kind of go into this. Like Guy Mitchell-Moore, he did a wonderful video about scoring with this library, but uh, this library is, uh, sorry, this video mainly is kind of to go into what I would personally use the library for, and I'll kind of give you my impressions and my overview of it as we go through. But if you want to really dive into what they call their orchestrator, so let me find that right here, Hollywood Orchestrator, basically, just as a bit of an overview, they basically give you these different slots for each of the different instrument groups. So woodwinds, brass, percussion, and strings. And you can basically basically choose which instrument from the family and also what articulation you want them to play. And then basically the orchestrator will essentially lay them out in a, in a manner that suits your workflow. So you can choose it to be the lowest voice, you can make the middle or higher voice, and you know, once you just play something, it can basically arrange it there for you. And they go into this a really, uh, really deeply in their official walkthrough videos. And they even have a video called um, Composing with Hollywood Orchestrator, I think it's called, that you can definitely watch to check out how they use this library in action. But um, let, let me give you a little bit of an idea of what the patches are like and some of my favorites here. So I've pulled up some of the ones that I really enjoy using, and then I'll give you my personal impressions on how they sound to me and how I would use them. So let's start with the first trumpet and this is a solo. So I'm gonna go into Hollywood Brass and show you how I got there, solo trumpet. And then they basically split into long, short. So long as sustains, short you have like staccato um, repetitions, which is really nice, mercato. Then there's some different effects like crescendos, trills and so on, excuse me. And then you have legato, mutes and a key switch patch, which has multiple articulations in one. So this is what the trumpet sounds like. I definitely appreciate that there's quite a wide dynamic range on this thing, actually. Um, you, you heard that there were some C-ringer high notes, and then there's quite that more mellow uh, pulled back sound, which I really do like. So it makes it more applicable to melodies and that sort of thing if you need that wider dynamic range, which is really cool. Uh, let's look at the six French horns, and this one is the key switch patch. So that's right here, six French horns, and I pulled in a key switch patch. So by default here, we have the sustains, and then uh, the D zero is the legato, then you have some shorts after that. So let's hear the legato actually. Let's start from the low dynamic.
I apologize for the um, the the little clicks and pops there. It's just a, the CPU is just overloading just a little bit. But I, the RAM shouldn't be an issue because the RAM um, I have sixty four gigabytes. So as you can see here, it it took up about twelve point three gigabytes. I think that's for every single thing loaded in here. So the RAM is not an issue. It's just the there's probably another program going on. But yeah, maybe you hear a couple of these other articulations. Now we have the three trombones. So that's two bass trombones and one bass trombone. So yeah, by default, the mod wheel kind of switches between non-vibrato sustains and vibrato. And I believe you can change that uh, to affect dynamics instead of, uh, instead of vibrato. So it's always good to have that option. Uh, let's hear the violas as well.
Okay, let's move on to the woodwinds. So now we have a flute, and this is a solo flute. I'm just gonna play the legato here, and of course, um, the the mod wheel is again mapped to uh, vibrato at the top of the mod wheel, and non vibrato is the same near the bottom. And then finally, we have the percussion. So the way this is mapped out is kind of across the entire keyboard. You kind of have timpani at the bottom, you have bass drums, then you have some snares, some cymbals, all of that good stuff. And that basically allows you to get up and running pretty quickly uh, because you know the, the whole point of working in a virtual library is to get the inspiration and the, the motivation all in one sitting, right, if possible. So you wanna work quick. Just a little side note, I love how the symbols also come with stopped sustains as well, or stopped samples too. A lot of the time, libraries will only come with like the the crash or you know the rolls, but they won't have a sample where it actually the player stops the sound. You kind of have to let it go and fiddle with the MIDI yourself to get it sound that way, but it's like that they included here. Cool, let's move on to the orchestrator, which is kind of like the other half of the library. And again, this is like a beast in itself because the Opus engine was really uh, uh, an innovation from the ground up, but the way they kind of put it together is really interesting. Um, the The reason you see all these patches loaded up here on the side was because I basically chose one of the one of the presets to start with, and uh, the way that kind of works is, you know, I kind of went through and I clicked on the preset browser at the top here, and then I went I went down I went down to, uh, you know, Hollywood Action for example, and I chose Hollywood Action one or I went to Superhero and you can pick one of these here. And it basically loads up a whole bunch of articulations that you can just play right off the bat. So let's experiment a little bit and see what that sounds like.
Okay, let's just say you didn't want one of these instruments to play, right? So maybe I play a note and I'm hearing something that I don't really like. Let's say maybe I don't want the percussion drum, the snare drum. Right, so it's really cool because you can actually go through it and kind of, you know, tweak the sample volume, the sample panning yourself, mute something or replace the samples if you want to. Again, these are just presets to get you up and running, you know. But the, I guess that really the power that comes through this is, you know, you see how when you load in a preset, they kind of go through and fill up these different sections of the orchestra for you. So there's, you know, percussion parts, there's brass instruments, there's woodwinds and strings. And if you want to really go in and focus on just one of them, you can solo it up as well. So the strings, for example, you can just hear the strings. For example, right? And so you, you can really tweak it that way. But again, it, it, this is really, really nice if you actually want to just get a an orchestrated pattern or a cue done very, very quickly. And for me personally, that's not the, the way I personally like to work myself because I like to have the individual control over every single instrument and what it's playing. And while an engine like this is the ideal for moments of inspiration. This this really reminds me of um, the Orchestra Complete too, you know? It's that type of library where you can just use their engine to your advantage and really load in something that sounds good right away. Uh, the only issue is that if you wanna send it off for live players or you know, if you wanna do like a notation for it, then it'll take a lot longer because you wanna go in and actually take a look at what all the individual instruments are actually doing. Um, whereas if you, if you write everything from scratch and do one track at a time, the time it will take you will be more, but at the same time, you'll have more control of that as well. So it's all, it's always a, a give and a take, right? And, uh, and for me, so that, that's why I personally wouldn't use the Hollywood orchestrator all that much. For me, the importance really comes down to whether the samples themselves sound good and whether it, uh, whether they sit well in a mix together, you know? And I can definitively say in my experience so far with this library that the answer is yes. I really do enjoy the sound and the clarity and the resonance they have in the in the hall. They've, you know, were really, really well recorded and they all seem very, very seamless together. I have to say my favorite out of all of the different libraries is the strings. So if you're only just to get one library, and I think if you get Opus, you automatically get all four. But if you were just to pick one from just the regular Hollywood Orchestra, I would pick the strings themselves because the tone and the way they flow together is just gorgeous. And I could definitely see myself layering this with something like Berlin Symphonic Strings or Cinematic Studio Strings for that extra bit of brightness and color and texture. Whereas um, the other ones like the, the woodwinds and the brass, um, they definitely flow very well as well. But for me, the strings just have that seamless emotional pattern that just feels really good. So yeah, that, that's just something to keep in mind. And of course, if you wanna dive really deep into the orchestrator, the, the way the entire engine works, they have entire like half hour, 40 minute videos on, on that type of thing. And I definitely recommend you watch that if you're interested in this library in any sort, in any way, um, because the presets again, get you going very, very quickly. And uh, they give you a really good starting point. You can tweak from there because um, that that's just the way they built their engine. It's super cool. But yeah, for me personally, I wouldn't use the orchestrator that much for my own writing because again, I'd like to have complete control of what I'm doing. And I like the, I actually enjoy going through and writing each instrument's line one by one rather than having an engine do it for me. So yeah, it's, it's just a personal preference thing, but um, it, it like I wanted to share this video with you, you know, to, to give you a sense of what I would use the library for myself. And the fact that it's also hosted not in contacts, but in a different engine is something to consider as well if you're looking at this type of library. Before they were hosting it in their own play engine and now they're hosting it in what they call Opus. So it's a it's a totally different player, but from my experience with the play engine with Hollywood Pop Brass, uh, the Opus uh, definitely seems to flow very well and work quite well and it hosts the instruments in a very uh, clean way as well. So yeah, I really enjoy it and um, uh, I definitely want to recommend it if if it's something you're looking for. If you're looking for that cinematic, full, rich, bombastic sound, then this is definitely a library to consider. The price point is quite high, though. It's $1,000 for the entire thing. Uh, 
if you're looking for an all-in-one library, this is definitely one to uh, take a look at because it, it really is super comprehensive. You get all four pieces of the Hollywood Orchestra all in one. So actually for $1,000, that's actually a pretty good deal, right? If you're starting from scratch and you want that complete orchestra. So so just something to consider. But in any case, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And if you're just getting started on your composing journey and you're wondering what sample libraries to look into and you know which ones to consider for your cinematic orchestral music, I want to point you to my sample library buyer's guide. It's an absolutely free guide that I put together, but just it just basically lists out all the tools that I use on a regular basis in strings, brass, woodwinds, percussion, and everything else that I like to use. This is in there as well. It's basically sorted into different uh, categories like all-in-ones and all, all the things like that. So it's absolutely free if you want to check it out. Hopefully it'll help you on your next uh, purchase if you're looking for some new libraries and uh, let me know if it helps you. So thank you so very much again for watching. I really appreciate it and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.